The Twilight Saga was a worldwide phenomenon, and without its very first film, the franchise wouldn't have reached the success it did. So, what exactly made the first movie so special? Today, we're giving you a behind-the-scenes look at some of the most surprising and adorable moments that happened on set. Even the most hardcore Twihards will be questioning everything they know about the film. Glad you're here. We need an umpire. She thinks we cheat. I know you cheat. It's time to talk about how they brought this thunderous baseball scene to life. Putting together a vampire baseball scene wasn't easy for anyone. The visual effects team had to map out the entire scene digitally so that they'd be able to add any extra footage they needed. Catherine Hardwick said they originally wanted a little bit of sunshine, but soon realized that would mean making the Cullen clan sparkle, an effect that would cost them big bucks. That was as far as the digital effects went. This Twilight film was on a budget, which meant using as many practical effects as possible. The most impressive part of the scene is how they got the vampires moving. For the Cullens, they were attached to ropes and harnesses while running to help them achieve a smoother glide. But for villains James, Laurent, and Victoria, their actors walked through the field on a magical green carpet to make it seem as if they were floating. You better hold on tight, spider monkey. <laughs> Bella and Edward's infamous treetop scene took quite a few different shots. With plenty of rope, stunt doubles, and a helicopter to get this shot, it was made possible. But there was still some tweaking that needed to be done, like moving trees and adding in cardboard ones to make the forest look a little more full. However, the best part of the behind the scenes may just be how adorable Rob and Kristen were with one another. Do you trust me? In theory. The CGI and visual effects in Twilight were very minimal, but there was no way to have our Pats attack a deer like Edward without the help of some movie magic. This opening scene was completely digital. From the forest, deer running, and Edward snatching it up mid-jump, it was all done with computers. Check out the breakdown of this scene. Cross the frame to tackle the deer, and, and of course we couldn't do that for real, so we did that in, in visual effects. Talk about a jigsaw puzzle. The car accident scene in the parking lot of Forks High was filmed in multiple parts. This was to make sure they kept the cast and crew as safe as possible. Rob and Kristen filmed their parts without the car even being there. The actual accident was filmed without any actors nearby. As for Edward's superhuman strength, the car door was made out of a soft metal panel with plasticine backings that was easy to mold. The complexity of the scene led to plenty of adorable moments between the actors on set that day, especially Kristen. This adorable behind-the-scenes moment shows off that props, even large ones, don't always function properly. Kristen couldn't get the door open to the truck and ruined the entire take. On one hand, the mishap allowed her to show off her goofy side to us. Hi, I'm Robert. And I'm Kristen. Rob and Kristen didn't spend all their time on set. Sometimes they would get called in for behind-the-scenes interviews where things got hilarious. For actors, these two really couldn't seem to remember the lines for the interview. Why do I, I keep thinking that is part of the thing. This, oh, this comes out in December, the theater's in December. All right. It made it all even more adorable. Their chemistry off and on screen was undeniable. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I can't look at you when I do it. All right. Bella Swan isn't the most coordinated person. We know that from the very moment she steps in the gym on her first day of school. Volleyball definitely isn't her forte, but it turns out it's also not Kristen's. In these behind-the-scenes clips, you can see that the moment where Bella accidentally hits Mike in the head with the volleyball wasn't her. It was a crew member on set purposely aiming the volleyball at actor Michael Welch instead. They needed someone with good aim to replicate Bella's bad aim. How ironic. <laughs> You're good. How meta was the moment Edward caught the apple and replicated the Twilight book cover? Well, it may have looked cool, but Robert Pattinson would probably tell you it was just annoying to film. The moment took 13 takes in total. They attached the apple to a fishing line and on a crane, so that they'd be able to give off the effect of Edward bouncing the apple back up with his foot and landing in his hands perfectly. It's a good thing Rob and Kristen found the whole thing hilarious between takes. Edible art. Edible art. <laughs> The wolves don't exactly become a main focus of the franchise until New Moon, but Catherine Hardwick still wanted to include them when talking about the Cullens and Quillute's history. The most cost-friendly way to do this was to bring in actual wolves instead of using visual effects. It ended up turning out extremely authentic. Beautiful. Very visually dynamic. 
filming in a room full of mirrors, a filmmaker's nightmare. The studio fight between Edward and James was extremely difficult to execute because they had to maneuver the cameras and crew into a position where they wouldn't be seen. It was the first scene of the entire film to be shot, but that didn't stop the actors from bonding. While the fight was coordinated, part of what you see in the film was actually Rob and Cam Gigande improvising. You're beautiful. The visual effects lead called adding the vampire sparkle the biggest challenge they faced while making the film because they needed to make Edward look smooth at the same time. They did this by mapping out Robert and adding sparkles in during editing. But Robert and Kristen still needed to film the actual scene where he reveals himself. It may look like a simple take of them relaxing in the meadow, but in reality, the two actors were under a very bright light to mimic the sun that was blinding. You can see them struggling to keep their eyes open and their giggles of relief when they call cut. 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 Good one, one, huh? Yeah. Cut, cut. <laughs> The outdoor prom scene was a nightmare to film. Not only was it at 2 a.m., but it was only 22 degrees outside and the cast and crew were freezing. Especially Kristen, who had to get through the take in nothing but a little sweater. The temperature also caused slippery conditions and a wipeout from Rob that Kristen still regrets not being there to witness. Rob fell? No, I didn't see Rob fall. I wish I did. A lot was taken into consideration when it came to the soundtrack of the film. Catherine had to make sure that the music also played into the emotional aspect of the story and was there for the entire process. Rob even has two original songs that made it onto the soundtrack of the first film. The songs were titled Never Think and Let Me Sign, and the song Edward walks into the cafeteria to was sung by his sister. Could you act human? I mean, I've got neighbors. From the start, Rob and Kristen hit it off so much that Rob was warned not to date Kristen off screen because she was underage. However, before that, Catherine needed to test out their chemistry in her bedroom. The two acted out the couple's first kiss at Catherine's house, and it was Rob's one chance to impress. Looks like he did. He then went into major prep mode, working out five days a week and even getting his driver's license. But he ran into some trouble creatively when filming and was almost fired. And they flew up and they're like, yeah, you got to you have to do the opposite of what you're doing now or you're gonna get fired today. Luckily, it all worked out both off and on screen. I am here to do my, my big cameo. This is my break into the movie industry. It's a well-known fact that Stephanie Meyer made an appearance at the diner where Bella and Charlie have dinner one night. But have you ever wondered what she was doing on her laptop? Meyer was actually writing Breaking Dawn while this scene was being filmed. She had to make sure that they didn't catch anything that was on her laptop in fear that fans would become super sleuths and zoom in on her screen. It wasn't all vegetarian sparkly vampires on set. Things got dark, especially for Nikki Reed. Rosalie's platinum blonde hair posed a huge issue and was quite the nightmare for the actress. My hair fell out. It took 36 hours initially to make me blonde, and every other day I was bleaching my head and my skin. Yikes. Yeah, let's just keep pretending like this isn't dangerous for all of us. Um, hopefully I look as good as that. He was running quite fast there. The Twilight Saga New Moon took us twihards deep into the mythology of vampires, werewolves, and everything in between. But behind the movie magic was a cast and crew who worked impossibly hard to make sure everything was perfect when it reached the big screen. From Wolfpack Camp to groundbreaking special effects, let's dive into the behind the scenes of New Moon. All right, let's roll it. The first Twilight film only skimmed the surface when it came to Stephanie Meyer's werewolf history. Just like it was Bella's, New Moon was our first tango with the truth behind the Quileutes. That means the CGI and special effects department had some big shoes to fill. They used some advanced computer technology to construct the werewolves and used references from real life, Timberwolves. They were then able to use these digitized models and add them to the raw footage. When it came to filming, they used plastic or cardboard stand-in werewolves that Kristen Stewart tried to avoid acting with at all times. It's like five seconds of me reacting like, <gasps> But for Taylor, filming as a wolf was pretty exciting. It allowed him to do some of his own stunt wire work. And I'm glad to have the wolf, the wolf pack here now. Robert Pattinson also got to get involved with the stunt coordinators during Edward's confrontation with the Volturi. 
While the stunt doubles took on most of the intense action, our paths still stepped in and did some wire work as well. Overall, the Volturi fight scene was intricately choreographed to run smoothly and took a lot of practice from both the stunt doubles and the actors. At the end of the day, Rob was congratulated with a cake because it was his birthday. Sadly, Kristen Stewart didn't get to become an expert motorcycle rider while filming New Moon, but she did get to have some fun pretending to ride one. To keep Kristen safe but also get as many close-ups of her as possible, they secured Bella's bike to a dolly platform that carried the motorcycle while it moved to give the appearance that Kristen was actually riding it. It was cool to be on the back of a motorcycle on the back of a car. <laughs> Kristen had another opportunity to get involved with some stunts, but it was just a little too risky. Bella's birthday party at the Collins may just be the most misleading scene of the entire film. The truth is that the majority of the time, the main cast weren't even the ones filming. Even characters not involved in the vampire violence like Rosalie and Esme were replaced with stunt doubles. Bella and Jasper's stunt doubles both wore wires so that they could be controlled when pushed back by Edward. The glass Bella falls into was fake breakaway material to prevent the stunt double from getting hurt. The real actors were carefully brought in to film a bit of the choreographed action, a part that Jackson Rathbone absolutely loved. He put so much effort into his attack that even Kristen admitted that she was terrified by his performance. A little bit of action, a little bit of ducking and jiving. Creating the werewolves is one thing, but showcasing Jacob's werewolf powers in human form, like his strength, took some added effort. In order to give the audience, and Bella, a hint of Jacob's new strengths, he lifted his motorcycle out of Bella's truck. While it isn't far-fetched to think Taylor could have totally done it without help, they attached the bike to wires and a crane to make the lift look effortless. <sighs> Dude, when did you get so strong? Speaking of effortlessness, the CGI team was able to make these behind-the-scene to big-screen transitions look seamless. Production on the saga changed from Portland to Vancouver after the first film, which meant a lot of the buildings we saw in the first film were miles and miles away. The set designers were able to put together or find replicas of Bella's home and the Cullens' home, but locations like Forks High were completely recreated with green screens. It's almost impossible to tell. The cliff diving sequence in New Moon was finally Kristen's time to shine when it came to trying out some stunts. But director Chris Weitz put some expectations on Kristen that just weren't possible. Yeah, I like stunt work. Kind of scary, though. <laughs> to give the appearance as if she was drowning, he asked Kristen to put weights in her pockets to allow herself to sink. With his experience from Harry Potter, Rob was making all the water work look like a piece of cake. So Chris was a little apprehensive as to why Kristen was finding it all a bit overwhelming. But when he decided to suit up and try putting weights in his pockets as well, he realized that not only was Kristen right in being terrified, but Rob was superhuman for not feeling the same. I decided to go down there in a wetsuit, weighted down, and I started to panic. In the end, it all worked out and looked amazing. How was it? Awesome. Yeah? Yeah. Something else that turned out amazing in the film, the entire Italy sequence at the end, but it wasn't without a lot of work from everyone involved. Before even shooting, the production team went on a detailed tour of Tuscany and Lombardy in order to find the perfect location. Because they were looking to keep a more Renaissance vibe, instead of a classic gothic vampire approach, they were very, very picky. The choice of Montepulciano was a sort of big discussion, and we really worked on that to get it right. Once they settled on a location, they were able to use it as inspiration for creating the inner workings of the Volturi layer in the studio. The costume department also faced some challenges in Italy. They had to find a quick way to be able to put 700 extras in cloaks for the Volturi scene when they were originally asked for 350. It started off as 350, then it grew to 400, and then someone asked me, well, how many do you really think you can do? That meant finding something that we could fit multiple body types. We came up with a simple formula, almost like one size fits all. It may have taken a lot of hard work, but that Italian sea of red was incomparable on screen. Taylor Lautner's wardrobe also needed a little extra attention from the costume department in this film, even if he was shirtless for the majority of it. In the novel, Jacob is supposed to have drastically changed from one moment to the next. Although Taylor did have a big transformation, they still had to make his appearance more exaggerated. We tailored all of the t-shirts he wore to make it seem like he was busting out of them. He also had lifts added to his shoes so he would tower over Bella. 
There wasn't much room for improv in the Twilight films because of the franchise's complicated storyline, but Anna Kendrick was able to show off her skills in this scene, with Bella outside of the movie theater. Her speech about zombies? Totally unscripted. Looks like Chris White saw her improv potential even before she moved on to share her talents with the Pitch Perfect team. And like, is it supposed to be a metaphor for consumerism? It wasn't all wire tricks and near drownings for this cast. Their chemistry and hilarious personalities led to some of these heartwarming bloopers on set. But like many film sets, being a part of the New Moon cast did come with its own set of rules. For the second film, director Chris Weitz made sure that every actor cast as part of the wolf pack could prove they held First Nation status. He wanted to ensure he was representing the Quileutes properly. Production designer David Brisbane even met with the Quileute Executive Council to make sure they were being as accurate as possible. Once those actors were cast, they were sent straight to what Chris termed wolf camp. It's here they were trained by professionals and were put on strict diets that had to follow. Chaske Spencer, who played Sam, found the whole experience pretty rewarding. So what they did is he threw us into circuit training and muscle confusion workouts. And then we just eat all day. It's pretty much four to six meals a day, plus three to four protein shakes a day as well. We are shooting scene 106, and I knew that from memory. The Twilight Saga Eclipse needed to be epic. Between its vampire battles and emotional love triangle, David Slade had to create the ultimate third part of the Twilight franchise. It's such a different experience. In this behind-the-scenes look at the movie, you'll see that the cast and crew's love for Stephanie Meyer's story and a whole lot of hard work is what made it possible. Ready to see some groundbreaking CGI and what Taylor Lautner was really like off-camera? Don't hold back. Not in my nature. While the characters grew and changed throughout the Twilight Saga, there was one thing that stayed consistent, vampire speed. One of the biggest challenges of the movie has always been to capture vampire speed. Getting human actors to move at an inhuman pace? Not the easiest. The film crew had to come up with some unique creations, like the magic carpet that they used during Eclipse. It was basically a large treadmill that they'd have the actors run on while speeding by with the camera on another truck. So long as you're not seeing their feet, it feels like they're actually going very fast. They'd also have another version of the carpet that they'd use in the studio for scenes that required green screen. The cast got a little competitive with it and even challenged one another on who could run on the carpet's fastest level. I beat everyone. While the magic carpet was kind of magic, there were just some vampire shots that couldn't be done without the help of computers. Like this Victoria moment that required them to construct the entire scene digitally after filming with her stunt double in the studio, where they had to create custom green screen platforms to imitate the jumping. She's close. The vampire speed wasn't the only road bump they had to overcome. Filming on Vancouver Mountains wasn't ideal for the cast and crew of Eclipse because the fall weather didn't offer them the snow they needed, and fake snow was out of the question in public areas. Instead, the set director got creative. We built the entire mountaintop on the stage and dressed it with the snow that we would need for the sequence. It took a crew of about 50 people to go through these vigorous steps to bring Stephanie Meyer and director David Slade's vision to life. The set was surrounded by green screen and gave them the freedom to film the bone-chilling final battle with Victoria and Jacob and Edward's emotional heart-to-heart -heart in the tent. If she chooses me, would you try to kill me? That's an intriguing idea. In the end, it was the right choice, not only visually, but because they were able to spend as much time as they needed in the studio, whereas on location, they would have been constrained by time and we could spend three weeks shooting the final conflict, which required extensive amount of stunt work and wire work. The werewolves in Eclipse may have looked epic on screen, but behind the scenes, not so much. They used plastic wolves, werewolf-shaped punching bags for the fight scenes, and Taylor Lautner even stepped in as a stand-in for the more emotional scenes. Oh, there's Taylor. Hey, say hi to Taylor. What's up, Taylor? Hey, how you doing? But the hard work was actually adding the werewolves in during post-production. We pushed a lot of our technology further than we've ever pushed it on Eclipse. They added more detail to the wolves in their fur and even their muscles than they had in the previous films. When it came to filming, each location needed to be scanned and created as a digital 3D model to integrate the wolves in their scenes seamlessly. I'll strategically shoot points on this hill right here and I'll use those points so that we can build a 3D model of it later so that our wolves have something to stand on. They came a long way from using real wolves in the first film. I've decided to throw a party. At your place? 
I've never seen your house. No one's ever seen their house. Moving filming locations from Portland to Vancouver after the first Twilight film got even more complicated in Eclipse when the crew realized that they'd be needing the Cullen house a whole lot more. Naturally, they came up with a solution. We knew that we couldn't consolidate everything into one room in Cheetah like we did on New Moon, so we made the decision to build the structure. Yep, they built the entire interior and exterior Cullen House that we see on screen during Eclipse, right down to the forest surrounding it. They filled the exterior of the house with fake trees, rocks, and realistic canvases. My name's Xavier, I play Riley in Eclipse. David Slade knew that telling Riley's story properly was important to tie the film all together. But with the books being from Bella's point of view, they didn't have much information on Riley and had to bring in the expert, Stephanie Meyer. There was a lot of confusion as to what was going on off screen, and I had some stuff written up for Riley, so we went through that. Once his story was established, they set off to their locations with a lot of rain machines. Xavier was a trooper and shot in a wetsuit for hours to keep warm while doing a lot of the wire work himself. Oh, the wolf coming up. Run. We all know while watching a movie that everything is not what it seems, but knowing and actually seeing the behind the scenes footage is a whole different story. During the scene where Jacob carries Bella through the forest took a lot of prep work. I literally went and got my rear end molded to make this day easier on Taylor. But their plans, involving a super innovative rig and molded seat, didn't go as planned. The idea was for Taylor to just support Kristen's weight while walking with her in the rig. But they just couldn't get it to look realistic on camera. They're like, Taylor, can you just carry Kristen? for the day. So poor Taylor spent hours walking back and forth carrying Kristen. While it was a piece of cake for him in the beginning, by the end of the day, he was completely broken. By the end of the day, my arms are just like shaking so bad. Speaking of onset workouts, the Cullens actors went through some intense training for their roles as vampires. They put like a piece of cheese up there and then we all run, try to get the cheese. Before filming even began, they attended group workout sessions to get in shape and develop their fighting techniques. Welcome to our vampire bat cave. This is where all the booty kicking goes down. It was important to David that the Cullens each had their own style of fighting that represented their background while also taking into consideration the moves Jasper would be showing them from his war days. One more thing. <laughs> Never turn your back on your enemy. For example, Alice is more agile and light on her feet, while Emmett is all about his size and strength. Believe it or not, the actors performed a lot of their own stunts, adding to the realism of it all. Would you do me the extraordinary honor of marrying me? The Eclipse team had the tough task of bringing to life Bella's engagement ring. It took them four different attempts, and in the end, they only achieved the level of perfection they needed by asking for help from Stephanie. What we ended up doing is having a conversation with Stephanie Meyer, who then drew us a little sketch of the ring that they ended up finally building. The ring is 14 karat white gold, and Kristen ended up being the lucky one, who got to take the ring home as a memento of her time on set. I'm gonna need that ring. We can't talk about Bella and Edward's engagement without discussing their meadow and how it came to be. David recognized that this was one of the most important locations in Bedward's story and needed to make everything perfect. This meant creating an idealistic place that was cinematically beautiful. It's the only piece of sanctuary that Edward and Bella have. To bring his vision to life, they hand-planted thousands of flowers. And mixed with Kristen and Edward's chemistry, the scene was breathtaking. We have established dynamics that nobody can mess with. Before bringing these beautiful scenes, like the meadow, to life, they had to deal with one small tiny matter, Kristen's hair. Kristen had cut her hair for her role in the film The Runaways. The Twilight filmmakers were completely against the notion and even offered Kristen what she called many ridiculous things to not cut her hair, but she had confidence in the wig department. Confidence that may have been misplaced. I just thought we'd have a better wig and uh, it's okay. Her wig in Eclipse wasn't the greatest and caused a lot of issues in the editing room that resulted in reshoots. There were even reports that because of the wig, Kristen was involved in some heated talks while filming the tent scene, and Stephanie Meyer herself even confirmed the wig troubles. And it's something that they've had to deal with. They were able to fix the wig, but fans still had their issues with it when the film was released. We're throwing grapes into Taylor's mouth. The cast and crew weren't always dealing with an issue or two. Some days on set were just about having some fun. Or for Taylor, good old healthy competition. 
When he was bored in between takes, he would gather his own tiny film crew with an assistant and create challenges for himself involving grapes and footballs. He may just be the greatest grape catcher Hollywood has ever seen. Were you watching that? What would a movie set be without some great outtakes, including these hilarious bloopers? <laughs> with a cast that was spending every day for months with one another, we can only just imagine how many funny moments took place on camera and off. Where could she be? Oh, there she is! According to Kristen, there were a lot of these moments, especially between her and Robert Pattinson. Me and Rob laugh more in the really serious scenes and like much, much less in the scenes that's supposed to be light and funny. They just couldn't keep it together and ruined multiple takes while working with one another. It's ironic to think about how Rob went from almost being fired on the first Twilight film because of his seriousness to him not being able to stop laughing while filming Eclipse. I came back off, I came back off the lunch, I was like, hi! I want to keep my job. <laughs> One thing is for sure, Robston's chemistry was undeniable. Ramping up to do that scene for like three years. Filming got off to a rocky start. The crew got stranded on an island and Robert Pattinson crashed a boat. Could have been better. The fourth film in the Twilight franchise required a lot of work and some tight security to make sure the production went off without a hitch. Kristen Stewart even had to cover her wedding dress with a cape whenever she wasn't filming. It's a good disguise. Which producer makes a sneaky appearance in the movie? Filming in Brazil brought the cast and crew of Breaking Dawn Part 1 a fair amount of troubles, particularly when it came to filming on an island. The team was just three days into filming on location in South America when they wound up being stranded on a small island overnight because of extremely bad weather. The crew acted quickly and tarps were brought out to protect the cast from getting too wet and the set pieces from becoming damaged. Since filming abroad proved to be tricky, especially with having only one week in Brazil, the majority of the set was recreated in Louisiana to fill most of the indoor honeymoon shots with CGI added after the fact. Bella and Edward's wedding was a pretty big deal, and it was saved to be the last scene filmed, with major security precautions taken. There were literally helicopters overhead making sure no one could see what was going on except for those involved with the production. On the ground, blankets and umbrellas were used to keep the set and cast out of sight. Kristen Stewart was even sporting a cape when the cameras stopped rolling to avoid any leaked images of the custom-made wedding dress. Just to make sure everything was extra secure, there were also literal police officers surrounding the scene. Running at incredible speed for the camera wasn't just a result of training. Elizabeth Reeser and Kellen Lutz were actually set in a pretty precarious rig with a rolling treadmill. The actors were secured on the rig by this green beam, while it was also being pulled by a truck with cameras hooked up to it, capturing all the action. Filming in a gorgeous country like Brazil might seem like a dream, but for Robert Pattinson, one scary shooting day was a real-life nightmare. The actor was manning a boat in the water, but instead of smooth sailing, Pattinson wound up crashing the rig. To make it all worse, it wasn't a private affair. The Edward Cullen actor had 5,000 pairs of eyes watching. On the upside, the actor was already pretty used to crashing the boat since he had regularly done so when he was taking boating lessons. Evidently, it seems like he could have used a few more lessons. Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson had to get very intimate for the cameras on numerous occasions. But what they hadn't planned for was needing to reshoot their climactic intimate scene. Initially, the footage captured was way too risque and required the film to have an R rating, but with so many fans of the franchise being younger, the team opted to go to camera again. The major issue? Too much of Pattinson's rear end was featured. Oh, so you used to be able to see my butt in it. While it was a tough scene for Kristen Stewart to do, she was happy with it in the end, even though it was just 40 seconds long in the final cut. Watching Bella give birth in Breaking Dawn Part 1 is still a traumatizing experience. And unfortunately, it wasn't much better on set for the cast and crew. Pattinson even called it perhaps the ickiest birth scene ever filmed. It's not a fun one to watch with all the gory details and Bella's clearly intense pain. With her already being in such a tough state, sickly, and severely underweight, the scene is far from pleasant. 
The birth scene may be disturbing, but credit has to be given to the team for how creative they got when it came to bringing the moment to life. The creepy blood on newborn Renesme was actually a combination of strawberry jam and cream cheese. We can only imagine it would have been a very sticky situation for everyone involved. Three hours worth of makeup and prosthetics were applied to Kristen Stewart for her birthing scene. Surprisingly, much of what we see of Stewart's body is actually prosthetics, pretty much from the shoulders down. The large table she was laying on had a space in it so the actress could lay her body down underneath the prosthetics. She wasn't alone under the table, though. A puppeteer was based inside to maneuver the limbs realistically. Kellen Lutz put his downtime to extremely productive use while shooting the final two Twilight films. Between takes, the actor went workout crazy and was getting fit consistently for the full seven months of filming, resulting in a very buff body. Lutz made very good use of all that downtime. While Taylor Lautner was famously topless throughout the majority of the Twilight saga, doesn't he own a shirt? Robert Pattinson had his fair share of shirtless moments, especially when Edward and Bella filmed some of their spiciest and most intimate scenes in Breaking Dawn Part 1. The actor spent a full six months doing intense training and watching his diet before filming. Because yeah, it's the only one I really worked out for. All of which ended once the intimate scene had finished filming. So many of the male actors in Twilight seemed to be on intense workout and diet regimens, and Lautner was, of course, no exception. All those shirtless scenes required a lot of work behind the scenes. But for the actor, the biggest challenge was actually the amount of calories he had to eat during his intense workout times. Lautner was often sneaking bits of food between takes to contribute to the whopping 4,000 calories he had to eat per day. Pattinson really put a lot of effort and work into his role as Edward. In fact, he learned to speak Portuguese. Just for the sake of shooting the scene with the housekeepers when Edward and Bella are on their honeymoon in Brazil. He may be needing some more lessons, though. Renesme as a newborn, shockingly, wasn't just a prop doll. There was a real infant on set. Depending on what was being filmed, the team swapped the doll for the real child and both had CGI retouching done in editing. Performing with an infant is an intense experience. Working with a real baby isn't always easy, though, especially when it's not happy and screams to let everyone know it. Jacob's emotions in Breaking Dawn Part 1 go to a whole new level. Taylor Lautner really gave it his all when it came to the Twilight films, so no doubt he was invested in the final products. According to Kristen Stewart, the Jacob actor actually cried while watching one of the cuts with the cast. With all the work, time, and effort, it's no surprise Lautner caught some feelings. It was, it was tough when it came to an end. The writer of the Twilight books was never too far, being on set for all of the filming, and she actually made the cut in a major scene. Amid the crowd watching Edward and Bella getting married is the author, Stephanie Meyer. She, the other screenwriter, Melissa Rosenberg, and Wick Godfrey, a producer, got to attend the wedding together. Since Meyer was one of the screenwriters, an executive producer, and the creator of the whole Twilight universe, she definitely earned her cameo appearance. It had been a while since her first, as a restaurant customer in the first Twilight film. And we all thought it was the best idea we'd ever heard. That was genius. Who knew vampires were such good dancers? The epic conclusion to the Twilight Saga had plenty of memorable moments that fans love. The behind the scenes of this film was chock full with even more moments that will give you a whole new perspective on your favorite characters. It's good to get physical when I've always literally stood behind people and been like... From the hard work put in to create your favorite moments to bloopers and pranks between the cast and crew. These are the behind the scenes moments that will make you love Twilight even more. She's amazing, right? 
During the final battle with the Volturi, Renesme is sitting on Jacob's wolf form. While the wolves have been completely computer generated throughout the series, in this case, actress Mackenzie Foy is sitting on an animatronic rig that was designed to look like the midsection of the wolf. They actually used two different versions of the rig for filming. One version was operated manually by a crew member just off screen, with the motion being used to assist the final animation we see. The other rig was motion controlled, which they programmed to move according to animation they had already done. That was new for us. That was pretty fun. I was born to be a vampire. Director Bill Condon knew that Bella needed to have a unique vampire look that differentiated her from her mortal look. A big part of the new look had to do with Bella's costume and how she was much more confident and powerful now. Her new look included leather, a black color scheme, and more form-fitting clothing. It also included colored contact lenses. So irritate your eyes at first which Stuart hated. This is one thing I can't wait to say goodbye to. Even though it wasn't the most comfortable experience for Stuart, we think her vampire look is awesome and showed off a whole new badass side to her character, Bella. She's got your eyes, Bella. If you thought the CGI baby was creepy, wait till you see what they originally used. They had an animatronic doll that was puppeteered off camera, and it looked creepy. So creepy that it was nicknamed Chuck Esme after the evil killer doll. Wick Godfrey, the creator of the doll, hated it as well. It is one of the most grotesque animatronic babies, you know, ever to not be seen on film. Knowing this, we're glad they went with the weird CGI baby instead. He would just turn into this completely different person. After deciding the animatronic baby was nightmare fuel, they brought in real babies to fill the part. Robert Pattinson absolutely adored all the babies they had on set. He would just turn into this completely different person. Whenever they would take a baby away from him, he would complain and argue why they have to keep taking them. Pattinson had a great time acting with the babies and children, and it shows in his performance. Telling war stories, or just standing there like frickin' statues. The epic final battle scene showcases the wolf pack attacking the Volturi in an awesome, badass sequence. The behind the scenes, however, not as epic. Since the wolves were completely animated, the animators needed reference to work with. So on set, they had crew members hold giant cardboard cutouts of wolves, feigning the action of the battle. They called the cardboard cutouts the wolf standees and used them for multiple moments during the battle. This includes the cardboard wolves pretending to attack the Volturi and the epic shot of all the wolves running towards the fight, which looks a bit more silly with their cardboard stand-ins. It's hard to watch the scene the same way after seeing this. The main thing is not to move too fast. Turning into a vampire comes with a lot of new abilities, most of which require stunt work. Stuart loved to do her own stunts and would get upset whenever she couldn't. She's like pissed off when a double has to do anything. That being said, some of the stunt work was a little too much for her. She was clearly filled with nervous excitement while doing some of her stunts, laughing after each take. Oh my God! Jesus Christ, I don't know why I can't handle that. I can't handle it. <laughs> Pattinson also did a lot of his own stunt work, including some pretty intense wire work. That was pretty fun. However, he had trouble doing one stunt in particular, a simple somersault. He failed on multiple takes, while his co-star Kristen Stewart nailed it every time. Pattinson had the whole crew laughing at his inability to complete a simple stunt. He went to his stunt double for help, who can be seen putting his head in his hands after a failed attempt by Pattinson. Very proud to have her be playing my daughter. Mackenzie Foy was one of the last additions to the main cast, coming on to play Renesme. All the other cast members made her feel welcome and would play games with her on set. She played football with Taylor, a game where someone tries to catch her hands, and would have staring contests with everyone. The cast only had nice things to say about her, praising her for her hard work. Mackenzie's great. She's very self-possessed for, for a really young girl. Come time for reshoots, Robert Pattinson was ready in all aspects except one, his hair. He had cut it before reshoots began, meaning it wasn't the right style for Edward. He ended up wearing a wig, which he hated. He branded it Frankenstein's monster. We still think he looks great. 
The final battle begins with the Cullens and Wolves running at the Volturi. They film this scene on a large soundstage with a green screen backdrop. The actors actually ran at full speed while the cameras followed them. They had to film this scene multiple times, which meant running, running, and more running. We can only imagine how tired the actors were after recording this scene. What makes the final battle scene so shocking is that it isn't in the book. The original ending in the book was deemed too boring, so Stephanie Meyer and writer Melissa Rosenberg came up with the idea of the giant ending battle. The way I approached it was, who would be the most shocking to kill? And because they're all there for Carlisle, it made sense he was the one. Rosenberg was at the premiere of the movie, and watched as the audience screamed and yelled during the scene. Director Bill Condon addressed the risk it was taking. The worst thing would be if people felt pissed off. We would say, the risk paid off. You're in it, you just gotta join in. During filming for the final battle, all the actors who were on the Cullen side orchestrated a dance-off prank. They choreographed an entire dance and got the audio and camera crews in on it as well. When action was called, the audio crew played a song and the Cullens all lined up to perform their dance moves. The Volturi actors and director Bill Condon had no idea what was going on. This prank was actually included as a post-credit surprise when the film was released in theaters. You know, whatever they'll let me do, I'll do. Ashley Green, who played Alice, was more than up to the task of doing her own stunts. She has a martial arts background and was routinely practicing for her stunt work. If I know there's a stunt sequence, I'm, you know, in the gym training by myself to make sure I'm kind of up to the task and working with stunt trainers. She performed some wire work, including doing a stunt in a harness she could twist in. The final shot looks amazing and shows that Green's hard work paid off. Vampires have superhuman strength and regularly show it off. The behind the scenes, however, makes their strength a little less impressive. Emmett actor Kellen Lutz can be seen carrying a giant prop rock, placing it down without any effort. This prop was a breakaway, which Stuart and Lutz can be seen breaking with ease. It's not the first time Lutz has handled such props. In a behind the scenes photo from Breaking Dawn Part 1, he and his co-star Nikki Reed can be seen casually carrying giant tree props. Stuart's last day on set was anything but glamorous. While running barefoot through a fake forest, Stuart stepped on something not too pleasant. The very last thing I did was step on a rusty nail. Ouch. That's a rough last day, but Stuart took it in stride, claiming it was exactly what she wanted. It was literally perfect. We wouldn't expect anything less from the Twilight veteran at this point. We're not sure what we love more, the epic final battle between our heroes and the Volturi, or all the behind the scenes shenanigans that took place while filming it. The epic conclusion to the Twilight Saga was under a lot of pressure to deliver a satisfying finale, which we think it did a great job in doing. Director Bill Condon worked well with his actors and was passionate about making this film special. It's nice to know that everyone got along and had fun while creating this film, and it helps us appreciate it even more. What was your favorite behind-the-scenes moment? 